Well, we're here. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. Tuesday. We got in Wednesday. Tuesday, apparently Wednesday. Tuesday, apparently Wednesday. We got in at some ridiculous hour yesterday. We're seven hours ahead. I hardly slept last night. I don't know, I don't know whether I'm coming or going, but one thing I can tell you for sure is that it's an absolute pleasure to be here with my dear friend, Tia. Yes. We all know her. I don't need to do the intro, Tia from Healthy Vegan Mama. Uh -huh. Thank you for having us. And nice to meet you Thank in you. person. Yeah, just cheers. Cheers. Let's cheers to that cheers. in British fashion. I feel like it's very, Salute, very as British. They say. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to meet you. And yeah, thanks for making the time for us. Same. And I think there's, there's people that are in both of our audiences that uh, are actually, we're really excited, but are more excited for this than we are. Yes. Which is kind of sad. But no, it's the internet, it's what happens. But no, it's really nice to be here. So Same. I've got a bunch of challenging questions for you. And okay. we'll have a good chat. And hopefully the people watching at home can take lots of stuff, lots of lessons and inject into their own health efforts. Hopefully I can give some decent answers. We hope so. It well, can be helpful. Just be honest and, and that will be useful to people. They'll okay. resonate with it. <laughs> You're a couple of cookbooks deep. Mm -hmm. So if people don't know at home, they do, but 73,000 plus subscribers on YouTube now. You've influenced thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people, it's probably fair to say, to get a hold of their health and, yeah. and take back control of their waistline. It's exciting. But why did you start Healthy Vegan Mama? I've known you for a long time, but why did you start then putting this stuff online? Yeah, I, I originally started because to hold myself accountable, right? Because mm. you and I had just finished coaching we were kind of at the end. I think I had signed up another like 30 days with yes. you or something. Um, and I was really... So this is how long ago? Four years? This was back in 2020. Yeah, three, four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was just really excited. You know, I was on the front end of it, very excited that, you know, I had done this because I had tried for so long to do it. Mm. And I, had di I did it. Mm. And... I wanted to hold myself accountable to continue to do this. Although I know you are so good at teaching, you taught me and your clients on how to do this sustainably forever. I, was I so mean, let's not. Uh, <laughs> You're good at it. Let's not make me sound too talented. You're very talented. <laughs> <laughs> very talented. But I was still, I think, a little nervous. Like, can I do this on my own? And so, anyway, to answer your question, I started the Instagram page mm. just to post photos every day of what I was eating. Mm. Just again, to hold myself accountable. Not to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Is that a good tip for people at home? I think so. It's public journaling, it's documenting. I think so. Yeah. I think so. If, if you're someone who needs someone to hold you accountable and maybe you can't afford a coach or whatnot, uh, for sure, it definitely kept me going. Mm. And then I started to realize like how freaking easy it was, right? Like it wasn't as hard as I always thought it was. And so that's when I started YouTube because I wanted to share and show people like, this is easy. It's not that hard. If and what it, I mean by this is like, like living this way, like eating this way. But why, why do you think you had this story? This is interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know we were gonna go in this direction, but this is cool. Why did you have this story and this narrative? Why did you believe it was harder than it actually was when it came to it? Because I had, I had, I had done it. I was a mom and I had tried to eat a plant-based, you know, lifestyle for so long. And mm. I, I think the story just existed because of mainstream media, right? Like you mm. hear all the time, it's so hard to be healthy. And if you want to be healthy, you have to get all these ingredients and spend time in the kitchen cooking. And so that was just in my mind. Mm. And and let alone to do it without meat and dairy right. and yeah. Right, and so it was just just in my mind. And mm. then when I signed up with you and we started just eating and coming up with ways to eat just real simple, mm. it, it just kind of mm. took off in my mind how easy this was. And so that's why I started YouTube, was to show everyone like, this is easy. <laughs> like, uh, at what point did you go, or maybe you haven't, so mm. I don't want to sound presumptuous, but what point did you realize Oh, this YouTube thing, it's a little bit more than a hobby. People are actually leaving me really good feedback. They resonate with what I'm doing. Mm. They find it useful. And then really blowing up on there. Because my memory of your growth on social media is that it was just ridiculously fast. And it kind of came yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm not surprised because I know you and I know what your personality is like. Well, I'm so much fun. Oh, you're a, fan <laughs> you're a fantastic character. This is, this is just going to be an hour of us complimenting each other. <laughs> I know. 
because it's us meeting we, in person well, for the first time. We both time, love it. Yeah, so. it's long overdue. No, I, I had a, my, I think it was like second video. Right. Uh, where I sat down and just, sorry, my hair keeps getting caught. Um, I just sat down and literally talked to the camera for an hour, not an hour, like 40 minutes, just about my struggles and how, like, I've tried this so many times and I, I, had, I was a mom with little kids and mm. no one else wanted to eat this way except for me, mm. right? And it re that resonated with so many people right. and I think the algorithm was just like, oh man, people love this video and it, I mean, it didn't get like a million views or anything, but it it blew up for someone who had like a hundred subscribers. It yeah. had blown up. So we do. I can't even remember the timeline of this. Were you on Instagram first and then went to YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you take some of your Instagram audience and say, "Hey guys, I've got a YouTube channel now. Check out this video." No. Um, I think what happened was all the the YouTube people mm. started to follow me on other way around Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. Understood. Okay. And then when Reels came out, right? Like then just things started growing on its own. Perfect on Instagram. for recipe videos. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. On that note, then, what does a typical day of eating look like for you nowadays? Well, it's a little different right now because I have no kitchen. Yeah, if the folks at home could see. <laughs> Don't look at, this is beautiful. Don't look at the background. <laughs> yeah. Don't look behind George, the cameraman. We've been remodeling. No. Uh, so a typical day for me, honestly, it's not that different than it always has been. Mm. Really simple stuff. I love to start my day with overnight oats. Uh, and, I, and I tend to, as I know you do too, to kind of get stuck on something and I'll eat, eat that for a couple weeks and then I'll switch to something else. But right now, um, overnight oats, easy to make at night, right? I just put everything in a jar, put it in the refrigerator. So that's usually a breakfast or I'll do, what do you guys call it? Polenta, Yeah. you know. Grit. That's very filling, yeah. although I'm not really eating that right now. What do you have that with, by the way? What'd you put on that? Sometimes I'll, well, see, I'm not having that right now, but what I used to do when I had a stove, mm -hmm. I would saute a little spinach mm -hmm and have it on like with that, mm -hmm. like lots of So spinach. savory style, obviously. Mm -hmm. I love savory, mm -hmm. love savory. I'm also a big savory oatmeal mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. But again, you need a stove for that. No, but it's getting more popular. Like I have more and more clients now asking mm -hmm. for savory oats options and I've got this cheesy chickpea thing and people, clients love it. And cheesy chickpea oats. I'm just a savory it sounds, like, person. To, to, to British people, they're like, savory oats, that's bizarre. But here it's super popular. So, um, so good. What about lunch? Lunch? Uh, right now, lunch is usually just a veggie sandwich, right? Yeah. So I'll do just Ezekiel bread, love it, hummus, avocado, lots of veggies, and um, some fruit. Yeah, right on no, my street. Sometimes I'm, I'm really on cucumbers right now, okay. which I'm happy about. So I'll eat, like if you go open my retreat. just cucumbers it's everywhere. It's ridiculous. Thousands. It's ridiculous. Well, they're really water rich, right? Yeah. So is it a weather thing because the temperature is so good? Probably. It's nice to have something hydrating. Probably. Yeah. But sandwiches, quick, easy. There's going to be a theme here for people listening. Mm -hmm. Repetition, you mentioned yep. this earlier. Mm -hmm. Simplicity. Mm -hmm. It's really not rocket science, right? Nope. Some people think this stuff has to be really complicated and you need 20 superfoods in each meal. Yeah. And that's I not, don't even think about it. That's not what's changed your body. That's not what's changed no. your health. No. What's changed my health is simplicity and consistency with that simplicity. Well, the right? consistency was you were able to tap into that because you gave yourself permission to keep it so simple. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dinner? Dinner uh, is more of like a rice and beans type thing yeah. or lentil marinara or um, red beans and rice. Again, beans and rice. I'm a big bean fan. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to think of what I had, you know, last night I had, I, and, and this again, is so simple. I'll take a can of black beans, rinse them, mm -hmm. put half a cup in a, in a, on a plate. Right now it's a paper plate. Mm -hmm. I'll aggravate some people right now, sorry. Uh, and then I'll you know, take some frozen rice and some frozen broccoli and frozen peppers and I'll just put it all in the microwave mm. for like four minutes mm -hmm. and put soy sauce on it or like salsa. It's ridiculously it's straightforward. It's so easy. Yeah. Or potatoes, actually. The other night, my family who does not you know, eat like me, they're not vegan, although sometimes I make them vegan things, they wanted to order pizza. And so they ordered pizza and I popped a gigantic potato in the microwave mm. and ate that with veggies, mm. right? And I didn't even need sauce because mm. if you have not had a Japanese sweet potato, you it's miss like it eating out. cake. Yeah, it's not, it's it, not as big in the UK. You but don't we'll, need anything on it. You, you talked about preparing meals and family not being vegan. 
stay tuned because we got a, a bunch of questions on that we're going to come to later. Mm -hmm. This is a tough one. Any old foods that you used to love that you actually miss a little no, bit? Not Nothing. Really. Honestly. I mean, I'm, honestly. I'm trying to be honest. Yeah. I... But I always get this question and I, I give the same answer. I'm like, no. Yeah. I love this way I eat. It's not forced. But I think until people have that internal transformation where they genuinely yeah. like being healthy, they don't get that answer. They don't, they're like, what? Really? I you agree. don't miss bacon? I'm like, no. Yeah. I don't miss, you know, for, especially meat. I yeah. never was a big meat eater, ever. I remember. So that was easy for you. Oh, at 11 yeah. years old, I was like, I'm a vegetarian. Right. Like, I hated meat. Yeah. And, which did not go well for me <laughs> at 11. In <laughs> Texas. Being a vegetarian, <laughs> I ate like rice aroni and. Right orange juice. Very limited. Oh, it was yeah. horrible. It was, anyway, I, where were we? What were we talking about? Any food you used to make? Yes. So the thing is, is I've learned to replace the things I love with healthier versions that are just as good, if not better. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't really feel like I miss anything. Mm. However, you know, my family ordered cheesy pizza the other mm. night and, and that, that probably was one of my biggest weaknesses yeah. along, you know, a while back. Um, I guess I miss that, but I really don't because mm. I make a Well, great... you don't miss it enough to go and indulge with them. No, I mean, not even take a bite, right? Yeah. Like, I just don't want to. Why? Why I don't want to take a bite? Yes. It's just not worth it for me. It doesn't Explain. seem... Explain. Uh, because... I, I'm not craving it, right? Mm. Like I don't want to, I don't feel the need to, let me just see what that tastes like again. I also, for me, I'm a very black and white person. I don't like to Give dip my toes the gray in a little area. bit. I yeah. can't do. It's I, risky. I hate saying I can't because I can do anything, right? Like anybody, you can, if you put your mind to something, you can do anything. And you're, you're not boxed in as a specific sure. type of person. However, when I do dip my toes in or do go in the gray area yeah. a little bit, it can become disastrous for me. So I just stay, I don't eat that. Right. I don't eat that. And that's easier. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, it's easier to make an absolute like, that's not for me, yeah. than to, I'll squeeze a bit of it into my diet. Mm -hmm. And there'll be people watching this that go, oh, that's actually an unhealthy relationship with food. You don't let yourself indulge, but that's not what we're talking about. Oh, I do indulge. Exactly. Yeah, what we're talking about here is that's not vegan. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a vegan, yeah. right? However, so if- So that if boundary is bang. That boundary is there. Yeah. yeah, it has nothing to do with yeah. health or diet or weight loss or my cholesterol. Mm. It's just, I, I made the decision to be vegan. If they ordered a plant-based pizza, mm. You know, I might take a bite of that sure. because I do, I, I'm not going to restrict, restrict myself. It's yeah. just, I don't feel the need to do it. Yeah. And what I did for so long is, you know, when they would order things like that, I just made a healthier version for myself sure. because I knew I, I needed to do that. Because then you feel like you're partaking. So if everyone's yeah. having pizza and you put together your own, yeah, you're part of it. You're not weird mom. Why aren't you joining us? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. What's the <laughs> weird mom, weird mom. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy weird mama. I laugh. I laugh. <laughs> Healthy weird mama. I think sometimes my son feels that way. Um, what's the health result you've had in the last five years or so that you're actually most proud of? The weight loss is obvious. Mm -hmm. You can say the weight loss if you want, but what are you most proud of? It's a funny question. I'm most proud of not having gallbladder surgery because mm. those doctors told me you'll be back. Right. You'll be back. And they haven't seen you Go since. ahead, do what, do what you want, Yeah. but you're going to be back here. Did that give you a bit of a chip on the shoulder? Oh, it lights a like, fire under I'm me. I'm going to show them. Oh yeah, because I'm just yeah. like that. But yeah. I love that I'm not back. Yeah. And that I've been able to manage mm. any gallbladder, anything. Because mm. you know, a, a gallbladder attack, you can have minor ones and major ones and even even minor ones like you haven't had nope the last five years nothing no amazing nothing and so i'm, I'm the most and proud they said of it that. with certainty they said we're gonna see you again tia yeah and yeah. i mean you know i asked and this is something to mention if you have gallbladder issues like i made sure my gallbladder um, wasn't diseased or right. something that would cause me to have to have emergency surgery sure. like i wasn't being 
um, I was being smart about it. Yeah. But they said, no, I mean, your gallbladder is fine. You just have a gigantic gallstone. Right. And so every time you eat a high fat item, it's moving around, it's right. blocking whatever it blocks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they said, you'll be back. Amazing. I said, Okay, well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that, and they haven't seen you said, so no. there we go. So they don't even know that you've put the middle finger up to them, because yeah. they, they haven't seen you again, but we know you have. Yeah. That's, it's your peace of mind, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. What do you think the hardest part of losing weight actually is? And there's so much we could talk about here. Yeah. But for you, what was the part that's like, ah. For me, in the beginning, it was just trusting the process, mm -hmm. because I had gone through years in decades of uh, fad dieting, mm -hmm. which was quick, mm. water weight really. Yeah. Well, I know now, but. And very extreme weight loss at first. Very extreme. Anyway. And yeah. so I expected that. Mm. And yeah, that was probably the hardest part was just trusting the process, right? Like even in a plateau, like trusting that this will pass. Yeah. Um, also, though, to go hand in hand with that, I would say the hardest part to. Maybe not so much for me, but I think for people, it's just discipline in general, mm. is, is having that discipline, not relying on motivation, because that is something I used to do all the time too, mm. was when I was motivated, like that was it. Mm. It was on. And then two days later, I wasn't motivated at all. Mm. And so I would go, you know, eat a bag of chips mm -hmm. and say, I'll start again tomorrow when I'm feeling more motivated, you know? There'll, and, there'll be a lot of people nodding their head. At, yeah, at home, so actually. that was the hardest part. So it was, you know, just the trusting the process in, which helped me be disciplined, right? Mm. So yeah, just staying consistent. But I think that was the hardest for me. Mm. Not staying consistent, just trusting the process. Just what, trusting that you could be consistent and that mm. that was actually in you. Well, and that consistency would give me results. Like, that Why just... didn't you think that? Because we all, we all hear consistency is everything. Uh -huh. I, I understand what you're saying, but to play devil's advocate, surely that's obvious that consistency brings results. I don't think why it didn't was you, for Why me. didn't it click for you? I don't know. I don't think it just was for me. Be well, why didn't it click? Because there's so much misinformation out yeah. there. And it didn't click for me because I would be like, well, but this person on the internet saying, if I just don't eat carbs, I'll lose weight quick. Right. So how could it be consistency? I, th I thought carbs right. made you fat, well, but it's consistency or? Well, just, you, you also didn't know what to be consistent with. So when you right. say that you learn the importance of trusting the process and that was mm. a big barrier, how can you trust the process when, as you say, this YouTuber said this, this diet guru or this doctor, mm -hmm. no matter how credible these people are, or your auntie says, oh, mm -hmm. hey, dear, I lost weight on keto. How can you ever commit to anything? Right. Yeah. It was difficult. Mm. Difficult. Well, well, on the note of transitioning and trusting the process, was there any point at which on the transition, the, the proper transition, because you flirted with this a few times, to eating more whole, fiber-rich plant foods. Mm -hmm. Was there any point where you almost did give up? I don't think we've spoken about this, and I don't, you're such a gritty character that I can't even imagine it, but there must have been weak points. Not when I was coaching with you. No. I was in it to win it. Yeah, from then that was it. But right, like that's why I recognized I needed you, is I needed, I needed someone to hold me accountable. Mm. And I knew if I had that, I mean even Jordan, my husband, he was like, you need to just bite the bullet and sign up with him. Mm. So Because he'd watched you talk about this and flirt with this and try to do this for yes. years. Yeah, and he was with me <laughs> when I woke up in the middle of the night and had a horrific gallbladder sure. attack. So that kind of scared him too. Yeah. So he knew like- So he's like, take care of yourself. We yeah. gotta do this, yeah. So um, what was the question? Was there any point you almost, in the transition, oh, yeah, where no. you were like, no. But no, and you're, you're all in, that's All in, what many like times though before every... signing up with you. Yeah. Many times. Mm. I, would, I would start it and then a week later I would be done. Mm. You know, and I would think there's gotta be something else. And onto YouTube I would go for, you know, typing the in the title, pill. how do I lose 20 yeah. pounds in one month? How do I, I mean, it was just. So you just needed to commit to I just something. needed to commit and see to if something. it worked, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. luckily it did. What do you think the biggest misconception about health and wellness is. There's so many here, but 
That Among, it's, amongst general people you talk to, whether it's online or in person, what do you think the biggest misconception is? Do. Yeah, you said this earlier. Yeah. And also that it's expensive, right? That's a funny one, isn't that's, it? That's there's two of them. I, yeah, it's. I hear that a lot. Like, oh, oh, you eat you eat plant based. That's you gotta be. You you must be rich. Mm. No, I mean, our our grocery bill has gone down hundreds of dollars. Because I'm eating whole plant foods, Hundreds right? Hundreds of dollars, what, a month, a week? I mean, a month. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I wasn't spending. Yeah. <laughs> I spent thousands of dollars <laughs> a week. No, a month, yeah. yeah. So it's gone down so much and... So why is there this misconception that eating healthily is expensive? Because I think people like, for instance, who... Is it an excuse? It's an excuse. They think we have to get the most expensive produce. I think also people still don't get what whole plant foods is, right? I think right. people still think that means prepackaged things, sure, vegan, fake meats and vegan cheese. That stuff's expensive. That stuff's really expensive. It's yeah. expensive. So you get just, I mean, and sometimes I do, right? I hate to say it, but I'll get vegan chicken nuggets for my kids or they love grilled cheeses and mm. I get them, you know, vegan cheese. Mm. On those grocery hauls where I'm getting stuff like that every now and then, the bill is so much more money mm. versus when it's very whole foods. I'm just getting yeah. potatoes, beans, rice, yeah. you know, things like that. It's, it's next to nothing. And then obviously there's the organic argument. And for me, if you can afford to get organic, it mm. is good. Mm. It is good. Yeah. But if you can't, that's it's, fine. It's and better it's so than cheap. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is fruit tends to be a lot more expensive than veggies. So fruit is incredible for weight loss, it's incredible for, as a source of, of nourishment and nutrients as well. But if you are on a budget, pack your diet with lots of veggies. Yeah. And have a little bit of fruit, maybe mostly frozen fruit, because that tends to be cheaper as mm -hmm. well. And that's the way to do it on a budget with all those cheap starch. The, the starchy foods are so cheap, aren't so they? So cheap. Yeah. So cheap. Mm. And no one eats them. No one eats them. The potatoes. So they're like, good for weight loss. They've mind. got a low calorie density. It blows my mind. Sweet potatoes are packed with nutrients. Yeah. Nobody eats them. There's tons of potatoes. Yeah, but carbs time. are bad. What? Carbs are bad. Right, exactly. So that's why. <laughs> um, how do you incorporate your meals, I said we'd come to this, with what your husband and your kids eat? We've kind of touched on it already mm -hmm. about if they're ordering pizza, you'll do a healthy pizza. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, a way to make it easier. Mm -hmm. But any other tips for people? I, again, keep things really simple. And I think that was that thought. I mean, look, I didn't invent that, right? Like, keep things simple. I mean, that's mm. just the way it is when you eat this way. However... No, but it has become one it, of your main messages. Yes, and it clicked with me when I was making multiple meals. Right. Right? Like, it clicked. Like, I have to keep whatever I'm eating so simple that I could throw it together literally while I'm making them whatever I'm making them. Mm. And um, so that's really how I do it now. I will say though, though my husband will eat anything I make and he right. loves it, mm -hmm. you know. He just has to eat more of it, more fat, sure. you know. Needs more calories, obviously. Needs way more calories. And he's tall, so he's, he's got- He's a big guy yeah. and he's lost weight. Like mm -hmm. he- Has he? Yeah, mm -hmm. just not trying. Just through you, <laughs> via you, yeah. Whereas, so whereas, whereas you're trying. And then, yeah, <laughs> and I'm trying and it's yeah. like- yeah. But uh, yeah, so he, he'll eat anything. My son is now willing to, to try and sure. eat. You know, my daughter just was so picky. So I'm usually always making her. But again, but I- But your I, daughter's amazing with vegetables, I remember. Amazing. Like weirdly good for a kid. She's so amazing. Up in the Western world. It's, yeah. The issue is like, I'll tell her, you can't just have cucumbers and tomatoes for dinner. You're gonna be starving. Like, what can we add to it? She doesn't wanna add starch. She doesn't like, you know, so she's a different beast in itself, but um, I keep whatever I'm making them really simple, and I keep what I'm making simple. And I'm talking like five minutes, something like mm -hmm. I said earlier with the beans and the rice and the veggies that I could just throw a sauce on it, mm -hmm. you know. And I've, throw a sauce on it, but also mm -hmm. add stuff to it for them that you don't have. Yes. Because you're throwing it all. Yes, yeah. yes. The other thing I would say to people is, Feast meals. Mm -hmm. Feast meals are great because of what I've just said. You can add stuff to yours and not to theirs mm -hmm. and vice versa. Wraps with yes. a nice healthy sort of whole wheat type wrap. Tacos, chili, things that you can, you put a little spread or and a platter. And you can all grab. And you can all grab your own mm -hmm. stuff. I think that's probably quite good for families. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To change tack slightly, 
And I'm, I'm actually surprised we haven't even mentioned this yet because it is another part of your story and your, your journey with nutrition. How do you stop or how did you stop emotional eating? Mm. How do you stop turning to food out of feelings? This is a big one. It's a big one. I think it's, there's a lot to it. I think one of the things that helped me stop emotionally eating was all the fiber I was eating. Right. I was full a lot. Yeah. So that kind of helped with the emotional eating. Like I didn't really feel that trigger a lot. Sure. I think because a lot of people so are di they're dieting so so hard that when a craving comes, mm -hmm. it's so much harder to control than if you genuinely are quite satisfied. And yeah. Feeling nourished. Yeah. Mm. So that helped, but also just figuring out different ways to combat that, right? Yeah. So for instance, if I was feeling real emotional about something, right? Cause it happens, especially with moms. Mm. Like you just, we're, we're, we're so overwhelmed mentally. Mm. I mean, right now, while I'm talking to you, I literally was thinking of what I have to do later mm. with the kids. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's a constant. Well, there's no peace. There's no peace. Especially when they're the age they're up. They're, yeah. They're young. So. Yeah. So, so anyway, to answer your question, I think that coming up with a way, something else to satisfy that, that need I was having, right, of eating because I was feeling emotional, whatever emotion I was having, um, reading a book, or which I actually got into reading because of that, mm. uh, reading a book or just walking around the corner, mm. right, not walking two miles or three miles because that can feel very overwhelming too, mm. to all of a sudden commit to that. But just saying, I'm gonna just go get some fresh air, walk around the block, see how I feel when I get back. And mm. that always worked for me. Another thing I used to do is just jumping jacks. Mm. If I felt the need to go to the refrigerator, I would get up and go and I would say, I'm just gonna do 50 now, jumping jacks. Now I love jacks. this. 50 I love jumping this. jacks, real quick. Yeah, I love this. Can you explain the psychology? Why did you, I love this, there's so much to this, so many layers to why I think this is genius. But what? What was the psychology behind that? Why did you think that was? Because it distracted me. Okay. It distracted me, especially because I didn't outlet. want to do the It's drumming. another outlet for emotion rather than just da 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 da. Yeah, and it got my. It just woke me up almost. Yeah. It was like a like a switch in the light switch, right? Yeah. And so I would do. I would say I'm just going to do 50 jumping jacks and see how I feel after that. And I always felt energized and positive, mm. right? Like, oh man, I don't want to go screw this up. I always. Do, and I'll still do it. Yeah. Because I'm really? list, oh, You're still yeah, doing I'll still, now, yeah. like, have the I didn't needs. even know you did this, but I don't oh, think yeah, we've yeah. ever mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah, I Too still, embarrassed to tell me. Too shy no, to tell. but I mean, it's, it doesn't happen it's a lot. Right. But I'm going to be real, right? Like, it, it's not just going to go away, the mm. feeling of, mm -hmm. of that. And especially after, you know, four years of... Yeah, of course, yeah. ...just doing this. So, yeah, the jumper jack thing was great. Yeah, I'm also a big believer that um, emotion follows motion and mm -hmm. vice versa. And so if you're sat at your desk all day, so this is, we've got very different sort of lives in terms of day to day. I'll be sat at my desk, I'm working with clients, I'll do some exercise at some point in the day, but I'm working with clients all day, or I'm on Zoom meetings, or doing social media stuff. I'm like this, I'm static. You can get in this antsy or bored or overwhelmed state very easily, just sat like this. Mm -hmm. And if I, I don't do it, but if I jumped up and did, did jumping jacks, I'd feel fantastic after 60 yeah. seconds because I've changed my state. My heart rate's elevated. My breathing's different. Emotion the follows brain motion. brain feels great. You, yeah. and, and you're not just sat with the same posture. And so mm -hmm. I'm big on that. Yeah. Um, I like that. And I don't think we've ever spoken about that before. No, and another thing is drink some water. Right. Cold water for me. I yeah. mean, cold water, not like a ton yes. where you're going to like drown yourself, but just... Like, and there are people that but, mistakenly associate with hunger with hydration, by the way. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are dehydrated. And mm -hmm. We're in a hot place here. We're in Texas. Yes. So yeah. drink your water, folks. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually a question from my client, Eric. I feel Ariel. like that was a good answer. That was a really good answer. <laughs> You're proud of yourself there. Oh, yeah. Check. That was a good Let's one. end it here, and George. I didn't talk Let's too end much. it here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's something like you. Um, <laughs> this is actually a question from my client, Erin. She knew I was coming to see you. A bunch of my clients have, have submitted questions. Hi, Erin. She's actually lost. 40, 50 pounds in the last year. Amazing. That's great. Biggest wins for her relationship with food, like we've just talked about, mm -hmm. emotional eating. She's done amazingly. Um, and she said, or something along the lines of, um, 
like even in this interview, we've discussed the weight loss, we've discussed the gallbladder, cholesterol dropping. You've had all of these amazing, you know, health improvements. My hair got curly again. Hair. Uh -huh. Were there any, maybe that's the answer, were there any other unexpected benefits to changing your lifestyle? Stuff that happened, you were like, well, this is different. My sleep. Okay. Totally improved. I mean, you know. That's if none of the kids wake up with sure, a bad nightmare. Sure, there's lots of variables right? that or, contribute to sleep, <laughs> but yeah. Or, you know, my sleep improved, my, hit, my hormones completely evened out. Mm. What do you mean evened out? What well, I mean, mean? Okay, I'm sitting here with you guys, but like my yeah, cycle. Yeah, but you know I talk about this every day. My cycle, says. like no cramps, no cramps. Yeah. Absolutely no cramps ever. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, if I... Zero. Zero. In the last However, couple of years. Yeah. Last couple of years, if I eat more fat that month, Bang. I'll have a little cramp. Interesting. Very interesting. And that might, that's just for me. Mm. But no cramps. Um, my cycle's just not a problem. My moods are more even, mm -hmm. right? I sleep better. We said that. My, so with the hormone stuff, my hair curled again. Mm -hmm. Like my hair was getting kind of straightish. Mm. But cur it was a weird stage. Um, it got when you thicker. say curly, do you mean, yeah, I was going to say, is it a thickness thing and therefore mm -hmm. it curls more? Yeah. Yeah, well, in the curls themselves weren't, it was almost like Strong. straw, but like thinner. Right. It just wasn't, Yeah. you know, I did my hair straight a lot. Yeah. Uh, my skin cleared up, right? Which everybody over 40 wants. Like just, I, I just, I mean, I could go on and on. No, but these are nice little, you know, you wanted to lose weight. And yes. you wanted to fix the gallbladder problem. You wanted the cholesterol drop. These are little cherries on the cake, aren't they? Oh, These yeah. are little things that, I mean, me, not to sound too crass, for me, first week I, I went vegan. It's crass, but bowel movements. Yeah. Because I was doing all that protein gym, bro, yeah. uh, you know, 220, 250 grams of protein a day from animal products mostly. Oh, gosh. You're I probably don't never to, going. I don't need to tell you what the smell was like, <laughs> right? God. And so that wasn't the reason why yeah. I wanted to eat more plants. It was to lose some bloody weight. Yeah. I know I'd gone too far with, with all the meat but and be healthier. But I noticed that in the first week. I was like, this is cool. Yeah. So there's a little cherry on the cake. little cherry on the cake. Mm. Yeah, same for me. We you like know, those cherries. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a consistent thing. Same time. Like mm. talking about bowel movements. Just like mm. that is great. I also, uh, this is kind of interesting, and I have yet to have a dentist admit this. Okay. I have not had a cavity, and I was a cavity. Like, I don't think I had any teeth left to mm. get a cavity. Mm. I would always get cavities, and right. I would always be told, like, oh, you just have one of those mouths where, like, you have more bacteria. Gross. Ew. That yeah, so that it was, because I was eating like, that flesh. So yeah, that sounds like <laughs> copium and junk food, let's be honest. Yeah. Because there's, there's people, and that just sounds like a copium to me. Oh, you've got a bad genetics for it. It's not like, true. you might not be taking care of yourself. I mean, that might be true to a degree, but there'll be, there won't be. But let's say there's a keto or a carnivore person mm -hmm. watching this, who obviously we don't share the same view on, but what we might agree on is whole foods, right? Across yeah. the diet spectrum, everyone agrees whole foods are good. And everyone starts being rude to each other on what percentage of carbs right. and like, but everyone mostly agrees, yeah, we should, all this junk food, loads of booze, it's clearly all the drugs people take, it's not good for you, right? Mm -hmm. Do some exercise. Everyone across the diet spectrum agrees this. So there might be keto, carnivore folks, or more inclined watching this going, but the reason you had less cavities here, it's not because you went vegan, it's because you stopped eating junk. Yes. We don't know, do we? Yeah. We don't know, and that's what my, my dentist is always so surprised, right? Because she's like, but you eat like, fruit and yeah. potatoes, sugar, sugar yeah. you know, and I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's not decaying in my mouth. Like Do you it's, floss? I mean, not like I should. Mm. No. I'm big on it. Daily. Not a big flosser. Yeah, I try, you know, I, I make sure my kids do it. Um, I try to do it, but mm. you know, no cavities. Mm. Yeah, I had, I've, so that had, was a good... I've had three or four fillings, but years and years and years ago. Yeah. Back when I was, shock horror, back when I was eating lots of junk food. Yeah. And my visits to the dentist now are honestly the highlight of my year. Yeah. They love me. Yeah. My last checkup. <laughs> so easy. Um, hygienist did what they did, went to the dentist, because um, in the UK you get two separate appointments, one for teeth cleaning, one to see your dentist. My dentist, five minutes. That's great. And usually we need to do x-rays and that sort of thing. We do that once a year, but five minutes back. Yeah, perfect. It's the best I've seen today. That's awesome. It. The ego is like, yeah, teacher's <laughs> fair. Fantastic. Um, 
how do you deal with social outings when you're trying to eat healthily? Yeah. Big that, one, again. That was big for, in the beginning, because again, like we talked about, I'm, I'm, I'm all or nothing, right? So I just made the commitment to not do anything social for a while, which for me was easy because it was at the height of COVID yeah. and shutdowns. And so it was easy for me. But I wanted to get into the habit of the way that I ate. You know, I wanted to give myself a chance. And I do think, I know that could sound extreme to some people no. like tonight, but I think it's good, it might be good to do for maybe just a month or three weeks. But yeah, that, that's what I did. And then f once I Sorry decided, to yeah. This is important. If there's somebody watching at home, mm -hmm. I'm gonna sound super judgmental here, but it's, okay. it's my real view. If there's somebody watching at home and they are incapable of not going out to eat for the next couple of months to prioritize health and weight loss efforts, what are we doing here? Yeah. They're not serious. Not serious. So I totally agree with you. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can never eat out again. You eat out now. I eat out now. But I think there is, I think you're right. I think sometimes in life you have to go through sacrificial periods to give yourself a chance to actually change, to build new habits without the interruptions. Mm -hmm. Then when you're a stronger person mm -hmm. and you've built your good habits and you've destroyed lots of the limiting beliefs you have and you've improved your relationship with food, then you can go out and to eat. And it's so much easier. I mean, George and I, we're gonna have two weeks here in Texas. We're gonna stay in some Airbnbs. So we'll do some really clean home-cooked meals, but we're gonna to have to mix it with some stuff that's less than perfect. And sometimes we'll indul indulge and we'll tactically have something less than perfect. Mm -hmm but we'll be absolutely fine because we've already gone through the transformation. Yeah. We've done it, we know we're in control, we trust ourselves. And, that's and it won't destroy, right? With yes. Everything you did, yeah. Yeah, you can have one little bad thing and then you're not ruined mm -hmm. for the next week. You're mm -hmm. not totally off the rails. Yeah, yeah, because before that it did ruin me. Right. It would ruin me completely. So yeah, that's I, I think a great thing to do. Also, you know, um, recommend where to go yeah right like find a place that has food for you mm -hmm. you know and don't be afraid to say can you not put oil on that mm -hmm. right like I was afraid for a long time before mm. I think that's why I stayed away from restaurants because mm. I didn't think I could ask but now sure. I, I just say I'm allergic to it if you say you're allergic to anything oh they're super they will oh, okay, not do yeah. it so yeah. you know, and I'll get yeah. some looks like you're allergic to oil yeah. I'm like, I'm very, that's a new one very allergic oh, bad things bad things happen you don't want to see me on oil I'm wild yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, or you could always bring your own stuff, right? Which a lot of people don't think that's a good idea. Uh, but you just got to be prepared. You can still do it. Of course you can. You can still do it. And it, I think you're right. It, it, it does depend on where you go a lot. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, here we'll be fine. There's so many good so many vegan, places. and not just vegan, but healthy spots for us. Yeah. Like we had sushi last night. And there was lots of things on the sushi menu. We had one roll that was kind of smothered in some probably quite rich oil, uh, a dressing, excuse me. Um, but there was some kind of clean, more vegetable type rolls. Mm -hmm. You can make it work. Yeah. If you're choosing the right places to go, depending on what you've got in your area. Right. So it's hard, but also worst case scenario, let's say you do have something bad. If you limit that to once a week, that's one, if you're having three meals a day, that's one in 21 meals. Mm -hmm. That's not enough yeah, to change to the scale. To make a big difference. But here's the risk, and this is what we spoke about earlier. Might not affect the scale, that one meal, but do your taste buds light up? Do mm -hmm. you start thinking, hmm, I enjoyed that? Do you get back on track from the next meal, the next day it's the slippery slope? Mm -hmm. So as long as you have that under control, you can easily have one meal out every now and again that isn't ideal. Yeah. And you don't do any of the things, the clever things you just spoke about, about how to make meals out more healthy. Yeah. But you'll, if it's under control, it's just once a week, it's still not going to ruin anything. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Totally. We're not some Puritan... No, totally can be done. Health people with this. No. Yeah, we're not neurotic. Maybe at first. Maybe at first. Maybe at first. And it's kind of a rite of passage that you need I to be a so. little bit neurotic to get mm -hmm. to the place where you learn balance. I hate that word. It's, it's so incorrectly used, but it's not forever. Yeah. How do you manage cravings relating to menstrual cycle? I don't restrict them. So you, you're looking at me like, what? what? How dare you? <laughs> no, but explain, because uh, I know just... you don't literally mean, oh, I eat ice cream yeah, during just, PMS. I, yeah, during yeah. PMS, I just eat ice cream and I don't tell Ryan about it. I know that's not what you mean. <laughs> no, I will, if I am wanting something sweet, I'll make chocolate chip cookie dough, yeah. right? And I'll dip straw, I'll, I'll have it with strawberries. Sure. Or if I want, again, I'll make like a chocolate mug cake. All 
you know, really clean. Really That's the clean, important thing to say. But yeah. delicious, and it and yeah. it, it, it gives it you some sweetness. Satisfies yeah. me, right? And so that's what I mean by I don't restrict it. Like if I want, I'll have it. It'll be my lunch. Yeah. Am I getting enough protein? Well, yeah, from the chickpea cookie dough. Yeah. But you know, I, I don't think about like, oh, am I getting the right amount of macros? Or no, sure. I'm just eating. Sure. What I would. If I and it's not healthy. the whole month round. It's, right? No, yeah. it's just one day or I don't know. Have you noticed a, um, this is really interesting. Have you noticed um, a difference in cravings between PMS itself, mm -hmm. right in the run up to menstruation and menstruation? Yes. So up until like before, that's usually when I have cravings, right? And mm -hmm. it's usually sweeter stuff, but it's nothing uncontrollable like it used to be, mm -hmm. right? Where I wanted to binge and just like eat a gallon of ice cream. Now it's just like, oh man, you know what I want to eat for lunch? I want like a whole watermelon. Like it's- Sorry, when is this? This is PMS. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I, when I actually have my period, I usually eat hardly anything. I'm just not hungry. Right, you feel lethargic. I, well, no. No? I still have energy. So why don't you eat? I'm not hungry. Okay. And I eat when I'm hungry, right? right? I'm not like, oh man, it's noon, I have yeah. to eat lunch. It's yeah. lunchtime. Like, I literally eat when I'm hungry. Perfect example, yesterday I didn't have lunch, this probably wasn't that great, till five. Yeah. I just didn't, I had my overnight oats at, at 10 yeah. and didn't eat lunch till five. Mm -hmm. I wasn't hungry. Mm. Interesting. You know? So I. Um, yeah, it correlates pretty exactly with what I've found and um, I've worked with. You know, Vegan Slim and Sustain, we've had 350 people. I, I would, I'm pulling this out of the air, but it's probably roughly 280 women mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. So there's a good percentage of those that are still, you know, mm -hmm. having, uh, having menstrual cycles. And what I have found, this is anecdotally, and it's very clear to me scientifically, is that PMS itself in the luteal phase, so just in the build up to menstruation, that's when you're genuinely more hungry. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a strong argument that metabolic rate increases so you can actually eat more and it's not going to get stored as body fat. That's good to know. So that's the good news. I, th I think we've talked about this before, but that's the good news. Now, it then switches. So during, during PMS, there's, there's a very good argument that women should eat 100, 150, mm -hmm. 200. Maybe that's a push, actually, extra calories, but certainly 100, 150. And I'll give clients that really struggle with this permission to do, to have an extra snack a day and that sort of thing. Then what happens with menstruation is you're not hungry, which mm -hmm. is exactly what you found, but, and you don't experience this, but a lot of women do, that's when emotional eating will happen because you wanna soothe and you wanna numb the physical symptoms mm -hmm. um, or the lethargy. And I, yeah, and I don't, I think this is a big change from when I, like eating this way, I don't experience those symptoms that I used to, mm. right? So you don't feel like you need to mask them or stuff them down. I'm not with, feeling with junk food, lethargic yeah. or, uh, I mean, listen, I'm sure I have my months, sure. but like right now actually, yeah. like is my time. And yeah. I, I mean, you would probably agree, like I'm super energetic. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm not. You'll see her, like I mean, yeah. yeah, I just don't experience that. Sure. So I used to, like I used to big time. Now I am tired, but it's like at night. Sure. I'll fall asleep on the couch at sure. 9.30. I sure. usually am up till midnight, right? So you like, notice you're more tired yeah. still during menstruation, yeah. But that's But not that's during the normal. day like but I not used during to be. The day, during yeah. the day, it's fine. And it's not but... ditch your energy completely. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay. Um, what tactics successfully got you through plateaus on your way to where you are at oh, now? Plateaus. The dreaded plateau question. Uh, definitely, again, trusting the process. But that's not a plateau, is it? That's consistency. Plateau yeah. is you're doing, let's assume, and maybe it's my fault for the wording of the question, but let's assume you're your doing, fault. it's always my fault. <laughs> I'll take the responsibility. Let's assume that I'm the question asker. Let's assume that you've done everything perfectly over mm -hmm. two weeks. You've not dropped, dropped a single pound. Mm -hmm. What have you done? Because you've had various stages of these. So I've worked you, with you through them before. What have you done that breaks you through? When you think you're doing everything, oh, I'm eating pretty cleanly. I'm eating the same diet as when I lost weight earlier. What do I do to I get through that? I think like a drastic change. 
for me, right? Because like mm. sometimes we did like the potato cleanse, yes. right? Or fruit only for breakfast for a week. Yes. It was things that, you know, maybe not that drastic, but it was drastic to my body. Yes. Right? Like, oh, she's... We're doing something different. She's not doing overnight yeah. oats When breakfast. we say drastic, we don't mean extreme. We're like, oh, yeah, we're doing yeah, something different. No, just different. something yeah. to, to my body that seemed drastic. Yeah. Like, oh, she's only, a lot of people only they... eating potatoes for lunch and dinner. Yeah. Like, what? Uh, and when we say only potatoes, a potato-based meal, but it's... Yeah, yeah. It's... Not to correct you, but it's... I think a lot of people, they, they'll hit a plateau and they're just like, oh, that's my body, I'm done. I must yeah, be stubborn, no. I can't get through this. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what you've learned is adjust, try something. Sorry, mm -hmm. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but no, that's, that's exactly, what you're saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it just changes like that. Something different than what I was doing, I noticed yeah. it would. But I think the, the thing to ram home with this is whether it was the fruit only thing, which I don't do as much anymore, but it's really effective. Whether it was I having, didn't like that, by the way. Thanks for your feedback. I appreciate it. We should really have this discussion it worked. off camera because you're actually embarrassing me right now. Front of my, I like savoring. Front of my people. Um, yeah, it's savoring. This is true to you now, just harsh. She's lovely off the camera. Um, <laughs> but why these things work, whether it's having a few more potato based meals, whether it's having or a lot more or whether it's doing the fruit only breakfast. These are not magical things by themselves. They shave a few calories off your diet mm -hmm. and they allow you to crack on. Because mm -hmm. what happens with weight loss, as you very well know, is that as soon as you put your body into a, into a calorie deficit and start losing weight, your metabolic rate will decrease right. as a natural adaptation to the lower calories. Mm -hmm. And at some point, that decrease in metabolic rate will catch up with the amount of calories you're eating and you'll just even out. And so it's really important that people see the process of losing weight as one whereby their plan and their strategy will be forced to change if they want lasting success. Mm -hmm. You can't just eat the same thing and, and have it not bring results and think that, well, six months ago that worked. Yeah. You might have to do something different. And I think yeah. that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like it. Um, easy and quick meal, uh, easy and quick dinner meal ideas. People don't tend to struggle with lunches and, and breakfast so much. People can be very repetitive with those. They don't need loads of variety. But do you have any good, yeah, good dinner I mean, I ideas? I say for these people? all the time, but like lentil. <laughs> I lentil. laugh because it's literally lentil marinara. The, I say this every day. lentil marinara. Uh, I would I would do the red beans and rice. You know that's, <laughs> that's always. That's what I, I get a lot of clients that love that. By the way, it's so. Good. They're like, can you adjust Tia's red beans and rice? So on? good. Ramen bowls. You've been doing ramen. You do quite a few of those. So easy. Yeah. I mean, any one pot, anything. Yeah. Right. Throw it all in. Instant Chili. Pot. Chilies. Chili. Oh, chilies. Oh, I forget about chilies. Chili is really good. I used to eat that a lot. But it's not the time of year for it, is it really? No. But chili's good. No, 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 no. Yeah, just those kinds of things you can just throw in a pot, or an instant pot, mm. or a, a, you know. What's yeah. your thought process? How do you stay strong in the times where you're overwhelmed, tired, feeling a bit lazy, you don't want to cook, you don't want to go move your body, you don't want to do any exercise? How do you get through those moments? I'm worth it, right? Ooh, that's cool. I always remind myself, like, I am so worth it, and mm. I should do this not only for myself, but for my kids and my, mm. my husband. Like, I want to be around. I tell them all the time. Like, you're going to have to deal with me until I'm like 110. Mm. I'm going to be here. Mm. Or at least 100. Like, mm. that, that I will. I will. Uh-oh. So <laughs> That's not needed. Full yeah. self-belief. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So I, it's just important to me, yes. right? And so... So in those moments where you're like, oh, do I have to cook now? Or it'd be easier to order in or the family's eating something mm -hmm. that is vegan, but it's not really on my plan. You'll say to yourself, or do you, do you even consciously do this? Or is this at the point where it's, no, I know what I'm doing. I know no, why I'm I doing it. Know. I believe in myself. This is yeah, great for me. I just me. know. And again, it's still not that big of a deal for me mm. to get up and make something because it's five minutes, Yeah. right? But it's that's how you, minutes. that's how you justify it to yourself. It's like, I know what I want. Yeah. I know I deserve these results. So yeah. Here we go. I'm going to get on with it. Doing it. Nice, like that. Yeah. We've talked a lot about nutrition today. Are there any other, this is an interesting one, are there any other health practices that you're working on right now related to anything else? I, I mean, no. Yeah. I'm still really trying to find ways to get more consistent with 
you know, healthy vegan mama and doing those things. I'm trying to come up with, actually I am, I am in the beginning stages of figuring out kind of like an interactive cookbook thing, I mm. think would be fun. Uh, what I don't do you know mean what that even looks like. Yeah. I don't even know. I just feel like there needs to be something different. Something where you, what you can change. Yes, I'm a very like, I like to be different. Mm -hmm. Oh, we and know that, we know like, that. <laughs> if I feel like I'm doing something everyone's doing, it really bothers yeah, me. Yeah, that's a big pet hate of mine as well, so. Yeah, I know, we're so much alike. I feel like you're like my long lost brother. Yes, it's worrying I from, told an, you, from I another belong, land. I belong in land. England. Yeah, <laughs> even though like, you've yeah. never been. Even though before, I've never been. Before this, T was like, oh, I just, I feel like my soul's in the UK and I don't mean to sound patronizing. No, and I was there. like, Tia, you've never been. How do you know? There. She's watched Downton Abbey and she's like, <laughs> I gotta go. I was like, Bridgerton. it's not all like that, Bridgerton. Yeah. yeah. That's, a lot of that is filmed in my city. In it Bath, is? Funnily enough, yeah. What about Queen Charlotte? What's that? Jeez. Is that another <gasps> show? Same people who did You Bridgerton. watch more British TV than me. It's really I love, embarrassing. I love it. <laughs> my um, car is British. Is it? Uh huh, Lane River. Got? Okay, of course. Yeah, it's from yeah. We haven't Lane. seen many of those, have we, since we've been here? So, we haven't oh, seen many of those. Time. Yeah. You get to drive that way. Got to go that way. That's where all the uh -huh. all the Brits are. Just keep going that way. That's it. A lot of Range Rovers. Or Austin's that way. Mm -hmm. And Austin, we've had a good time here. It's not my, I don't want to offend anyone. It's, there's many brilliant parts of the city that I've seen so far. You've but, been here like 10 hours. Yeah, but I've already <laughs> formulated my assessment. <laughs> and uh, is it 10 hours? I don't know what day I don't it know. is. I'm so just guessing. I've already formulated my assessment. And I think for me, if I lived in this area, I'd definitely be out somewhere in the, yeah, sub you need in the to suburbs. Because uh -huh. like, this is so, when we were driving out to you, it's so beautiful and it's so mm. nice to get out of the downtown area mm. and just see trees again. It's, yeah, it's so hilly if so you go hilly. west. For, it's just different. driving, it's like, it's a pleasure to drive around mm. here and just your nice bendy roads. It's, yeah. I'd love to have my car here, but never mind. We've got a, we've got a nice <laughs> yeah. little rental, so that's fine. Um, in the time we finish coaching, you've never ever, we've talked about wobbles, to be honest about it, but you've never ever been close to going back to your old weight. Never ever veering back up the scales to that degree. Neither have you ever indulged in those old habits to any significant amount. What do you think has been key in actually maintaining this? Because a lot of people at home, they've got experience with weight loss, but they haven't actually been able to do, and I know you want to lose a bit more, they haven't been able to do what you've successfully done, mm -hmm. not go back up the scale. Mm -hmm. What are the secrets? It, it, it's, it's too easy, honestly. And like I, what I have uh, crafted for my life is just too easy to not do it, right? Keeping things simple. Mm -hmm. um, I always, I always, and we didn't talk about this, but I just think I, I can't drill this in people's minds enough is mm. I always have food to cook. Right. Always I prepared. I always have it, yeah. even though I have one can. I've just of been in your <laughs> salsa verde. Yeah. Right, but we've got to tell people about this. Tia showed me her pantry, which she's incredibly proud of, and rightly so, because it is it's ama an amazing pantry. Everything's awesome. stocked nicely. And I, I just wore, I knew this would irritate her, because I know her well at this stage. I just walked up, because she's got like five cans of chickpeas, yeah. three cans of, uh, three jars of oil-free marinara, 20 cans of black beans, whatever it is. Everything's right, really well stocked. And there was just one single can of salsa verde. And I was like, I know this is gonna wind Someone up. Someone gave that to me. So I was like, me. there's only one can left. This is a disgrace. It's not a normal grocery item for me. But to be serious again. Yeah. Which is hard for us sometimes. I, I always have. Preparation. Yes, I always have beans, um, any of my staple foods, like, mm -hmm. which are rice, you know, rice. Everyone always asks me on, in, on Instagram, like, what's your starch of choice? It's mm. rice for me. Sorry, potatoes, yeah. but it's rice. Yeah, I'm a grain guy as well. Oh, I love grains, yeah. like barley, like, ugh, it's just so good. So I always have frozen rice, frozen, frozen veggies, mm -hmm. uh, frozen fruit. And if you can't get those things, you can prepare, right? You can cut them up on the weekends and freeze them yourself. Mm. And so I just find that there's never an excuse for me, mm. really. Although, you know, not having a kitchen is a pretty big one right now, but. Yeah, but you've made it work. I've, I'm making it work. And there's just no reason to not do it. It's too easy. But I'm going to challenge you here. Yeah, go ahead. And this is not that I disagree with you because it's your answer yeah. about, about the question I've asked you. But. I agree with you. Preparation's been really important to you in maintaining. I think there's deeper stuff happening. Mm. You wouldn't be so committed to doing the preparation. You wouldn't be so big on this message of simplicity like we spoke about a million times already today if there wasn't something in here different to the Tia of five years ago. Yeah. 
I think the reason you haven't gone back up the scale is because you've actually changed. Oh, you in huge. here, in here. So I want to get at that. That's yeah. the interesting stuff. I know it's a bit abstract, a bit conceptual, but what here has stopped you going back up the scale? Something switched. Mm. You're incapable of doing it. Why? Maybe you don't know. Maybe that's the I best answer. I mean, I might have to comp contemplate that for a while. I, yeah. I do know I am happy. Yeah. I'm so happy with my life. I'm so happy with myself. Mm. I. So you've seen the results of your efforts? Yes, I'm just, I feel good, yeah. right? Like I don't- So why would you throw that away? Right? I just don't want to feel like I used to feel anymore. Yeah. And- So it's partly a results thing. You've seen what, this is, what your hard work has done for you and you're like, well, I'm not going to throw that away. It's a no brainer, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas when you don't have the success, you can't see how worth it it always is and yeah. how much better you feel. So it's hard to buy into sometimes. Yeah. It's hard to convince yourself you can do it. You've seen the other side of that. So you're like, of, totally. course, I'm gonna, of course I'm not going to go back up the No, scale. and I also love the, what I'm eating, right? Like that I helps, love yeah. everything but, I yeah, eat. Yeah, but again, let's go deeper because that's mm -hmm. only an extension of this changing. Mm -hmm. Your lovely red lentil, red, you know, red bean, excuse me, red kidney Have bean. Have you had you it? Are. No. Oh. It's disgraceful, isn't it? Okay, you're here for two And weeks. I'm in your house. When you come back. You gotta make it. For I'm me. making it. Mm. I will. I will. Instant but my client, pot. honestly, my clients are always going on about it, so I know it's going to be good. We're and it's up it's my street. So good. Um, I forget where we were at. Just I, going stuff. deeper, but that would take. I have to think about that. Well, let me throw another thing at you, just from what I think I've observed about you, and I might be wrong over the last few years. You, you can put this back at me if you think this is wrong. I think your standards have changed, and I see oh, this yeah. with a lot of other people that lost weight, and it's the way I feel about myself now. I feel that it would be very impossible for me to really gain a lot of weight now and get unfit because it's just in the bluntest possible way, it feels completely unacceptable for me, mm -hmm. which might sound really arrogant and pretentious, but that's honestly how I feel about myself. I, like that's totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I, I'm literally incapable of going back up the scale because my standards won't permit me to. Totally. My does that, standards does that are, oh, it is. My, yeah. I mean, when you said it, I was like, oh yeah, you're my standards are way higher, mm -hmm. way higher. And I'm proud of that. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. And when we say standards, what you hold yourself to. What my whole, I hold myself to, yes, absolutely. In the kitchen with exercise. No, I don't do this anymore. I do, I'm making a choice to do this. And you know how I know you're exactly right? Tell because I, I, I find I'm holding other people to those standards right. and I have to kind of back down a little bit. Yeah, because people don't want that. No, especially Not your external husband. external pressure, yeah. Sorry, and they, they need to, <laughs> Oh, he's a great guy, but they, they need to want to change. Yes. And he's lost weight. Yeah, well, he didn't need to. You know, that's his thing sure. now. He needs to, he needs to bulk up yeah. more, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to, he looks amazing, but he, uh, yeah, so my standards Stand for sure, mm. for sure. And I love it, I think right? I love where my standards are. We've we got to move on, but I think the way, because we've spent a lot on this question, but I, I think, the message I want to ram home is you started by talking about the reason you haven't gone back up the scale is about simplicity, it's about preparation. It's too easy for you to, to not. And I get it and I agree with you, but I think the, the lesson I always try and give, not that I'm always in a position to give it, is that when you change, that's when you do the sustain part. Mm -hmm. And so I call my program Vegan Slim and Sustain for mm -hmm. a reason. There's the slimming part, but we have to actually, I try and give my clients sustainable habits. And it's a hard task sometimes because yeah. you're working with people and it was hard for me. But if you can really, really change internally, the process of wanting to be healthy, wanting to be fit, it feels so natural to you. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're at. And I think I appreciate what you're saying about simplicity, easy meals. That's deep. That's the deep stuff that drives the actions. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Totally. Bit abstract. That's why you're good at what you do. <sighs> That's very kind of you. Because you think that way. I don't know. I don't know. I think very maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's too too conceptual. I don't know. <laughs> very quickly, there's so much because we do need to crack on. But there's so much info out there now. So much conflicting information as well. Information that dis disagrees mm -hmm. with one another. How, how does someone work out where to start? How did you know where to start or what to trust? I <sighs> just trust like basic common sense, right? Like that, and I always go back to that. Like even, even when I, people try to argue with me on stuff, it's just basic common sense, mm. right? Like we were given all these fruits and these veggies. Of course, we're supposed to eat a potato full of vitamins. Like mm. why else would it be there? Right? So I just, it's just basic things that I think about. And even, you know, the meat argument, are we supposed to be eating meat or not? I don't know. 
I don't know. I know how I feel not mm -hmm. eating meat. And I do know, I do know thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. people were not eating meat every single day. Mm -hmm. And they were not eating meat at every meal. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had it occasionally when they were mm -hmm. able to kill it. and mm -hmm. Fine. Your body can recover from any, anything so quickly mm -hmm. that maybe it didn't affect people mm -hmm. the way it does now. Because we are just constantly bombarding ourselves mm -hmm. with animal products. And not to mention trash foods generally. Trash anywhere. food. I mean, that's a whole like, nother. Th there's a lot of non-animal products that are terrible for you as well whole, to be, to be whole, balanced with this. Yeah, yeah, totally. So to answer your question, I just, I keep things basic in my mind. And I also just go with You've just followed what, what resonates with you. Yeah, the, yeah, but the, the, the science. And I agree with you, but the science is something that kind of gets trotted out a lot. People just say, trust the science. That's kind of vague. Like, there's scientific papers that will say one thing with another. You gotta dig deeper, there's not really. Yeah. With the uh, well, you gotta stuff. look at the stuff that's funded yeah. as well, yeah. But again, we're talking about a beginner, right? You've been yeah. doing this for years, you know your stuff. You've done the certification that you did a couple of mm. years back. The average person coming into this, there's all this conflicting info. Where do they start? Mm -hmm. What's your response to them? It's a hard question, but I don't know the answer. I mean, I think maybe you start where you feel like your heart is telling you to go, sure, right? Sure, of course. Because You've got to go anybody with can say, oh, you need, sure. to, you need to be a whole food plant-based vegan. Or you must do keto. Or, or you, you got to do it is. keto. Just this is the way you lose weight. Yeah. Whatever. People get very controlling over their own yes. approach. Yeah. You know, this way of eating spoke to me. It right. always has. Like yeah. I said, when I was 11, I, I was a vegetarian. Sure. Like I just... So you just followed that instinct. I just followed that instinct. Yeah. And then I think from there, you just do what feels sure. best for you. Because yeah. there is no answer, sure. right? And not to sound absurdly cliche, this is going to sound so cheese, but <laughs> even the stuff I used to do before how I eat now, even as much as I look back and I'm like, oh, roll my eyes at it. I am... It was all part of the reason for me finding this. I had to do the bad stuff to realize how bad it, how bad mm -hmm. it, because I didn't think it was bad stuff at the time. Yeah. Right? So no. when people are like, how could you have eaten how you eat before and then suddenly had that change? Well, I didn't know any better. I didn't feel any better. I thought I was doing the right thing. That's what we do, right? Oh, I don't I look at people that disagree with how I eat and I go, oh, they're dumb, they're stupid. It's obviously not that binary. They really believe that my way of eating is deficient or is, malnourished or whatever their and story okay. is and yeah. yeah i don't get i don't it's changed my life so i know it's not mm -hmm. correct for me um and so it all all those mistakes so cliche led me to well i think i need to try this plant-based thing next because mm -hmm. it ticks this box and it fixes the problem that i had when i was doing more meat or it fixes the problem that i had when i was obsessed with all the gym bro stuff and oh the flexible dieting can't work so let's try this all these philosophies are They've come after how I teach my clients. It's come after years and years of mess up. Yeah, and I would agree. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I did, you know, keto or mm. Atkins or, I mean, I lived my whole twenties. That is what was I dieting, quote unquote. Yeah. yeah, but it was keto. Yeah, right. And, okay, and yeah. you know, Atkins at the time. That's sure. how I lived. Mm. Never worked. I mean, it worked, mm. but it never got me to where I am now. There wasn't that sustained part. Like no, we said and I was so yeah. unhealthy. Mm. So unhealthy. Do you supplement anything? Yes, uh, I take Complement. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm familiar with it. Which I love yeah. Complement. Which is a multi. It's yeah. a multivitamin, but you're not getting a million, you know, hundreds of different vitamins. They mm -hmm. literally, you, um, they only include the basics, mm -hmm. things that vegans might not be getting in their diet, like mm -hmm. B12, Got it. Um, vitamin K, mm -hmm. you yep. know, iodine. Mm -hmm. Those. It's li it's like five things. Mm -hmm. But the great thing I love about it is that. Uh, um, I imagine it's got, Omegas it got are vitamin in there. D as well. It might do. Vitamin oh, yeah, D. Yeah, it's got vitamin D, B12, yeah. Omega, yeah. DHA. So it's great. So mm -hmm. I'm literally, I just take three pills mm -hmm. a day and that's it. I'm done. Love yeah. it. And Easy. I have a discount. And code. worth saying as well, and I don't think this <laughs> mm -hmm. really needs mentioning to my audience, like, you know, regardless of what diet you're on, supplementing is wise as an insurance policy. Is, that's my view. And so this is not a, totally. you must supplement because you're vegan. This is, I choose to supplement because I care about my health. And oh, there might be sure. slightly different things I supplement as a vegan than a meat eater, but I still want to optimize regardless. It's not right. a vegan thing. Oh, deficiency, so you have to supplement. I think everyone should supplement. They should, especially because that whole B12 argument sure. with, you know, people think they're getting a lot of B12 in mm -hmm. meat, but honestly, Is there really that much? Yeah. There's really not that much. that's something that will unravel in time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very different question. You're smashing it online. Um, 
do you have any tips for anyone that wants to get in the so into the social media stuff? Instagram, Yeah, YouTube, just etc. do it. Just do it. I think so many people have like feelings and thoughts about doing it and they're afraid to do it. They're apprehensive. They don't know how to do it. Just do it. Just, just make that post. Just make the reel. Film a video. Mm. Like just post it and do it. That would be my first and foremost thing. Mm. Because I, I wanted to do it for so long and I didn't. Mm. And then finally one day I did. And you're made for it as well. So you just needed to get it. on with it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for everything. Um, we're not wrapping up now, but on that note, thanks for you know everything you do in spreading this message. Uh, you're it's the, my pleasure. You're the, I told you off camera, you're the, just the perfect personality for this. <laughs> you are, and you just resonate with people. It's like affinity makes you a really good teacher. When people mm -hmm. can click with you, because I'll get a lot of people that come to my channel. Like, like I say, my demographics on my YouTube channel is 70% female. Mm. Most of my audience are a lot older than me, based on my demographics, and so. Obviously, there's still people I connect with, but I'm very conscious that there are people that come to my channel, like, he's a 29-year-old guy, he's already lost the weight. They've seen my before and after photos, but it's so long ago. Does he really get me? Do I really, can I really see myself in mm -hmm. him? And you just have such a huge base of people that really click with you. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I think Affinity has, has made you a great teacher because you're literally going through and have gone through very recently Oops. their journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have kids and you have kids. People click with this. You know, busy life. I don't know what am I gonna do when my kids are in college. Healthy <laughs> vegan healthy <laughs> vegan grandma. <laughs> oh no. Um, what's next for you? Health goals or otherwise? You just spoke about the cookbook, but uh, you know, even yeah, health even health. Still I still am not at my when we come talk about health, all this like kid markers and glue. I know. I still you Ruin know, this I know table. I've been staring yeah. at it. I uh, I'm still not at my ideal weight, mm -hmm. right? Which is what do you think? I think it's like 132ish. Mm -hmm. Not there. Mm -hmm. So, so we got some work to do. I'm not giving up. Good. We got there once, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I just don't think it was maybe we need to get there in a more sustainable way for mm -hmm. me or I need to just change my thinking. But yeah, health-wise, I, I just want to get down to that. Not for looks. I think 130, for it's the record, just, 132, is, 132 is completely doable. Yeah, I mean, I'm 5'5", five five, so it's like, yeah, it's I think that's doable. probably. Totally like, reasonable, yeah. yeah. I Health-wise, that's where I want to get. Not for looks, just for, I know that, you know, for my own health, for what's going on inside my body, yeah. I probably should be there. Mm. And, um, the other thing is just, I just want to reach more people. Mm. That's all. So just, grow this healthy vegan Yeah, just moment. keep doing this, get more consistent, mm -hmm. show people just, again, how easy it is yeah. to do this. There's just still so many people who mm -hmm. I think that's just your thing. don't get it. I think that's the thing that you're better at, frankly, anyone on the internet, so therefore probably the best in the planet at, frankly, even though it sounds bold, is you are the best person in the world for showing people how easy this mm -hmm. lifestyle is. I mm -hmm. think there's no one, I'm really not just blowing your trumpet because we're in person and I like you. I think objectively you are the best person at that in the world. Yeah. Probably because of that affinity thing we just spoke about, but also your, your persona. Yeah. So keep doing it, let's <laughs> yeah. do it. Otherwise <laughs> no, it's also, wasted, otherwise your talent is wasted. Yeah, I also think- I mean, you're busy, so you're gonna have to balance it, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I think too, what I maybe need to, brand myself more with too is that like I'm the only vegan in my family of yeah. four. I don't talk about that enough. Yeah. And for a while the they when I first transitioned over, they all did it. Yes. But it was easier when my kids were younger. Were they younger. listened to me. They didn't have their own me. opinions. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. four years ago Max was, you know, six. Yeah. So it's so much easier to tell a six year old like you're eating yeah, this course. red beans and rice. The now he looks at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. Or I'll pack him a lunch at school, right? A nice healthy lunch and then he bought his own lunch. Sure, he's you know? got a bit of pocket money now. Yeah, and, so yeah. it's just, um, I need to talk about that more, I think, mm. that, you know, you're not alone. Like, it's there's this, so this isolation. For, there's a lot of moms, I mean, it extends to fathers too, but there's a lot of moms that, yeah, they, they are They're alone feeling very that. unsupported on their journey. I yeah. work with a lot of people that feel that way. And, and we are the example, right? You like, are. We yeah. are the example of our That it can be done and family. it can be balanced. Oh, excuse me, sorry, for, for your family. family. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, you're a robot. But Obviously, you're in a leadership position in the family. So. Yeah, so yeah. it's important. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you 
everyone, yourself, everyone at home watching, I know full well that how you grow up eating, absolutely you carry on for the rest of your life. And the habits and the relationship with food you develop, it's not to say you can't change it, but it really does set the tone. Oh, you for sure can change it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we I mean, know. I grew up in New Orleans, sure. in China. That's yeah. No, no, Fried. but I am, though. Hush puppies and oh. corn dog and, yeah. Fry, I mean, just... Chicken and waffles. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, just horrible, delicious eating and... Louisiana food, eh? Emotional eating like nobody's business and drinking and just... Yeah. And I'm completely different. Mm. Completely mm. different. Good for you. Is there, is there are... anything... Standards, again. Is there anything... I mean, that's the end of my question. Is there anything else on your mind? Anything else you want to chat about? No, I just can't thank you enough, honestly. Like, I'm so Don't happy I'm meeting you. Don't schmooze me now. No, I'm so happy I'm meeting you. Yeah, it's cool, huh? It just makes sense that this has happened. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, we're friends now. Now we're officially friends. We're officially friends, and the internet knows. Yeah. Well, let, since we're officially friends, let me take the last minute to do uh, a, a bit of a plug. We taught you know about my 10K scholarship thing. Mm -hmm. I've not made it easy for myself because I'm doing, I've got to do loads of meal plans later this week and that sort of thing. But if anyone wants to join Vegan Slim and Sustain, like Tia did, one of my first clients years and years ago, mm -hmm. um, and you want some help losing 10, 20, 30 plus pounds, eating very simple, as we've spoken about today, plant-powered meals, doing a little bit of exercise, but none of this hit workout extreme you know, nonsense. We don't need to do any of that, just gentle exercise. Um, Vegan Slim and Sustain could be the thing for you, watching at home. That's and great. now, is a fantastic time for you, not for me, because I'm creating a bunch of work for myself to join, because <laughs> we've got this 10K scholarship giveaway. So as I was telling you about the other day, there's 10,000 US dollars, it's chipped away at now. We've had 10 signups already. That's 10, awesome. 10, 10. Yeah, yeah, last week we had 10. So I had loads of work to do before even getting on the plane. But um, yeah, we've got 10,000 US dollars set aside in scholarship money that I'm allocating to new members to put towards their joining fees of Vegan Slim and Sustain. That's so awesome. now's a really good chance. It's open though, there's not long left, it's four or five days now. So Sunday, August 27th, this ends. So I'm hoping to put this up in the next couple of days, by the way, but we'll chat about when might be a good schedule for that. Um, but yeah, so if you are interested in learning more about the scholarship giveaway, it's a great opportunity to join. And a great Swimming program. Sustain. Well, I did it last year, the scholarship thing, and it was wild, so in September last year, so I thought yeah, I might really make it an annual big. thing. Yeah, so if you want the details for that, I'll put the PDF It'll be the first link in the description there. I'll put Tia's stuff as well down below. Go and get all the information about the 10K scholarship giveaway and the next steps to apply. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Lovely to meet you in yeah, person. Yeah, this was fun. Thank um, you, George. Good old George behind the camera. No, he's, it, we couldn't do it without him, to be George honest. great. We're the stars of the show, but George, I mean, I George is actually the most important. Fancy with the lights and stuff. <laughs> That's it, very glamorous. Um, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.